Hello, welcome to the introduction to the long material. This is MXC 2.04 and the part one of the introduction to bound material class. So in this introduction to bound material, first we are going to study about what is bound material. And then we will learn about what are the application of bound material. And then in this bound material subjects, what kind of things we are going to study in this subject? And then how we are going to prepare these biomaterial? And then to understand the biomaterial, we need to know about how to categorize this biomaterial. Later on, I will introduce about the current biomaterial research and then the biomaterial in the future. So first, let's talk about what is biomaterial. So biomaterials could be any kind of material. It could be metal, it could be polymer, it could be ceramic, it could be composite. But one important thing is that this biomaterial is designed to interface with the biological system. So it could be for many reasons. For example, for the evaluations of our body or for the treatment of our body replacement of any tissue, organ, or to function our body. So the important thing is, this biomaterial is designed to interact with the biological system and to be compatible with the biological system. In this case, very important thing, the ability that these biomaterial need to have it, it should not be damaged to the surrounding. It should not be damaged to the biological system. And also, it should not get damaged from this process too. Very importantly, these biomaterial might not produce the toxic substance and might be compatible with body tissue. So this is general definition of the biomaterial. So for the classification of biomaterial, I find said earlier, so it could be polymer, metal, ceramics and composites. So let's take closely one by one. So in the biomaterial, biomaterial these subjects, there are two important things that we need to have in background. So in this triangle at the bottom, we have the foundations and disciplines that's required for this biomaterial class. So engineering foundations and also medicine foundations. In engineering foundations, we need to have a physical science. In medicine foundations, we need to have the biological science. So there is two main components that we need to understand is physical science and biological science. And going out from the bottom, so from the physical science part of you, so physical science is mean non-living material such as metal, polymer, ceramics. This is in detail that we need to understand what kind of material it is. What is the property of material? What is the structural material? So we need to understand about non-living material. And on the other hand, for the biological science, we need to know, we need to understand about living material such as cell, uh, molecules, DNA structure, proteins, something like that. So I'm going up at the top. So this is the interaction. So the interaction, is means the interaction between non-living material and living material. How the living material will respond to the living material. That is generally what we are going to learn in the biomaterial subject. So on the left hand side, this is the illustration, the interaction between biomaterial surface and the biologic environment. Then in detail in the next slides, we are going to talk about in detail the interaction between non-living material and living material. So let's start talk about non-living material, which is another term, which is about material science and engineering. So people know about material science engineering uh, very well. So in this material science engineering, to talk about, to make it easy to understand about 
explain to understand about this material science engineering, first we need to know about the elements and the compositions in this material. What kind of elements contain in this material and then how the elements are bound to each other. In this case, how the microstructure of this material. And then to have this microstructure, what kind of synthesis, what kind of process we need to use to get this kind of microstructure, to get this kind of performance. At the same time, we need to consider about the fabrication cost of, the, of this material. So this is generally about the material sign engineering. But here we are going to have a study case about the material sign engineering. So let's say that we are going to prepare the semiconducted polymeric thin flames for the microelectronic device. So our device fabrication device is semiconductor polymeric thin flames. So to make this polymeric thin flames, first we need to pick out one type of material, which is a polymer. So in e in even have the one type of polymer, so we have the what kind of polymeric chain it is. To make it conducted and semiconducted property, what kind of dopants we need to use for this conducted polymeric flames. And then what is the microstructure? What is the arrangement of these polymer? And combine it, integrating with the dopants. And then how the, the conductivity will be able to achieve by using this dopants to this main polymerase material. And to make this, this material happen, what kind of synthesis process we need to uh, use, we need to synthesize. And also, this is the thin flame process. In this case, we need to consider what kind of process is going to use there to make the, to fabricate the thin flame devices for the microelectronics application. At the same time, we need to consider what is the performance, what is the semiconductor property of these polymeric thin flames, depend on the thickness, depend on the dopants, depend on the, uh, the main polymeric material. So this is how we are going to understand of the material science engineering to design semiconductor polymeric thin flames for the microelectronic device. I hope you will understand briefly about material science engineering. Let's then go to the biological science, which is about living material. This is, we is going to understand the cell and proteins and also DNA structure, and ligands, antibody and antigens, the biological reactions in our body. So here in this case, biomaterial will be used in our body. So let's assume only it will be in our body. So in this case, we need to understand what is the elements that contains compost of our body. So the first one, the main one is oxygen, and second one is the carbons and hydrogen and nitrogen. So these four elements are more than 90% of our body. So <clears throat> these are the elements, the main element that's composed in our body. And then going up to the larger molecules, which is the DNA structure, which is by because of uh, the chemical bonding process, chemical biochemical reactions, it's found into the molecules like a DNA molecules, RNA molecules, a macromolecule, something like that. And then larger scale, it became a cell. And combining so many different cells, it became a tissue. And if different tissue is combined together, it's going up to the organ level, is many different organ are combined together, it will be the one system, just like a digestive system. And so many systems are working together, this is our body. How our body is working together, combining with so many different systems, so many different organs. But in this case, we are going to just emphasize on only one or two specific level, 
in in the level of the elements, in the level of the molecules, in the level of the cell and tissue, because this is the level that's that we're going to interact, that we're going to interface with our bound material that we are going to use. So in the human cell, there are so many different human cells in our body. So the first ones is the black cell, surface skin cells, bone cell, coronal epithelia and gold black cell, cardiac master cell, skeletal master cell, smooth master cell, and neuron. This is just the generalization of the different type of the cell in our body. But here, I was going to just pick one different type of cell, so the black cell. So black cell is very familiar with us. So this uh, we have the white black cell, red black cell, and the place lab. We know very well white black cell is like a, our different cell that defines any foreign material that can be inside our body. And the red black cell is carrying oxygen to all the part of the organ in our body and take out the carbon dioxide to the land. And then place light is mainly responsible for the, the stop bleedings uh, once we got the damage from outside. So this is just a general function. So let's take closely about the black cell. So the black cell, we have the one main stem cell. So the differentiation of this stem cell, we have the more like stem cell and lymphoid stem cell. And from this more like stem cell, we got the red black cell, plate glass, and also granulocytes. From lymphoid stem cell, we have the lymphoblast. And to take a look at the bottoms, we have the red black cell, plate glass, and the white black cell. So as I mentioned you earlier, the white black cell is our different cell in our body that fights any foreign material like a virus, bacteria, can be into our body. So in the white black cell, there are so many different white black cells. We have the eosinophy, neutrophy, baxophy, B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and neutral killer, killer cell. There are so many different cells because the function is different. Some of the white black cells, they stay at the front, front, front line uh, to define the funny foreign material, but some are stay at the back line. They make they give a command to other cell to fight to the foreign cell. So th this is the different type of the uh, white black cell, so which is called immune system because this is how we defend, how the cell defends any foreign material can be into our body. So how the black, black immune cell are produced? In our bones, we have the yellow bone marrow, and also that's contained at the center of the uh, femur. And in the other part of the femur, we have the spongy bone size, which contain the red bone marrow. In the red bone marrow, they have the blood blood cell flowing in the bone marrow. And then in this, around this region, they have the spongy size. In this spongy size, this is small pore, in this, place in this area, the red black cell, white black, white black cell are generated in this spongy bone marrow area. So white black cell is produced from the bones. That's why we call it one immune system, which is bone marrow immune system. It is not just bone marrow immune system in our body, but also the other type of the immune system, termites, spleens, lymph nodes, these are some of the immune system that in our body. It is very important to understand the immune system because when we are going to implant bone material in our body, the immune cell was going to fight back to our implant bone material. And then we need to consider, we need to engineer our bone material, how we are going to stay together with the immune cell. So that's why I want to introduce you this immune cell, but in this biomaterial subject, we are going to go more into in detail to understand immune systems. This is very good movie 
I still remember this movie when I first uh, take the class of the biomaterial. The, the very first lesson that I took is about watching this movie. So this movie is a fantastic voyage. Uh, in this movie, a group of the scientists, they use a nanotechnology uh, to make the uh, big submarine sheet. Uh, they go inside into the submarine sheets first, and then this submarine sheets uh, make it into the small, small scale of the submarine sheets, uh, include uh, why they are staying in the, in the submarine sheets. And one big submarine sheet is going in the side to the side of the nanometer, and they, uh, this submarine sheet it inject into our biological system together with some medicines, uh, liquid medicine, and then they go into the uh into our biological system into our body, and then uh to destroy the cancer cell, uh from in our body, so. In this, on the way to the um, cancer cell, so these foreign material, foreign, foreign uh, submarine should have a lot of the uh, uh, problems uh, interfacing with the biological environment. So these, in the biological environment, the, the immune system, uh, it's noticed about these foreign material and uh, these immune cells fight this submarine sheet, and then they have a lot of you know struggle, uh, using this um, going to, into the uh into our body using this submarine sheet. This is very enjoyable movie, and I'm hope you will learn a lot about the interaction between the foreign material and also a submarine sheet in the biological system. I hope you enjoyed this movie, and see you in the next sessions. Bye bye.